This is Dick's Sporting Goods Kickoff Week. It's a new day on the plains. Tiger fans are excited about their new head coach, Gus Malzahn. But some things never change, like the age-old traditions that surround Auburn football. The Washington State Cougars are in town, hoping to spoil the first game for Gus Malzahn. It's the beginning of a new era, and here come the Tigers. Jordan Hare steady and packed tight as Auburn opens up with Mike Leach's Washington State Cougars. Welcome to the SEC on ESPN. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to primetime. Alongside my partner, former Georgia All-American Matt Stinchcomb, I'm Clay Mappick. Good to be back in the saddle with you, buddy. Good to have college football back. And both of these teams went three and nine a year ago. As a former player, what's it going to be like for these players here tonight? Well, especially when you're coming off of a disappointing season, you can't get the next season started soon enough. But think about the work that these young men put in every off season, the winter workouts on frozen fields, the summer workouts while their friends are on the beach. They're on a bench press somewhere trying to get stronger, get better in preparation for their 12 opportunities to reap the fruits of their labor. And it starts here tonight. For Auburn, last season was historically bad. They went 0-8 in the SEC. And so to change things up, they brought back the offensive mastermind from their 2010 national title run, Gus Malzahn. We see a season ago, only 18.7 points a game for the Auburn offense that lacked energy. That's a guarantee with the Malzahn offense. It will have energy. It will have points, 33 defensively. They have to get the edge and get better play at the quarterback position from Nick Marshall. They love his skill set. They love his physical attributes. But what really set him apart was his poise and his decision makings. It's the mental capabilities that he brought that really separated himself from the pack. And Mike Leach's calling card is still the air raid offense. Last year, the Cougars struggled adapting to it. Is it going to be better here in year two? I think so. When you talk to the coaching staff, they talk about they're going to get better decisions from their quarterback, and they're going to have to decide at the quarterback position, do you take what the defense has given you, which is what that air raid D offense is predicated on. Play within the system and make sure that if you have a check down, you take it. You don't have to force the football downfield into windows that do not exist. Auburn fans starting to remember what it can be like inside Jordan-Hare Stadium. Didn't get a lot of this last year. Washington State won the toss. They elected to receive, so Auburn kicks it off. And Washington State will start at the 25. Here's a look at Connor Halliday. And the air raid requires consistency at quarterback Jeff Toole. And Halliday did not offer that last year as they combined on the job. You know, when you look at it, it's hard to develop rapport with your receivers. Not only was it a new system, but when you've got quarterbacks jockeying in and out of the lineup, hard to get the timing down, hard to get the nuances that are required in an air raid type of offense that's so pass centric. Three receivers to the near side, one up top, single back set. Halliday out of the gun, obviously wanting to throw right away, and it's incomplete. There's Robinson Therese, the star backer, breaking up the pass. You see Connor Halliday thought to be a bit of a gunslinger. He's got a great deep ball, but what the coaches want at Washington State is for his willingness to work through the progression for the underneath routes that are there. There, Robinson Therese makes a great play on the ball. Second and ten. This is complete and close to a first down. Knocked out of bounds, the receiver Isaiah Myers, one of two starting receivers back for Washington State. We're going to see a lot of receivers involved in this ball game. The balance that Washington State wants to achieve is to spread the passing game around, get all of the perimeter players engaged, including the running backs, incidentally, in this passing game. Opening series for the Cougars, first and 10 from the 35, they swing it off. Here's Bobby Ratliff 
Five of the team's top seven receivers are back. 70% of the team's receiving yards, Ratliff included. He picks up six here at second down. It's something that's a hallmark of the air raid offense. You know, when you see these screens, wide receiver screens, slip screens to the running back, that's effectively their version of a sweep play, a running play to the perimeter, except they just stand up and throw it wide. Connor Halliday. Incomplete. Again, well covered, intended for Christoph Williams. And it'll be third down and four. See already, Auburn defensively, some of the question marks were the secondary. They feel that they're thin, especially at the safety position. Right there trying to hit a crossing pattern, and all of these throws have been well contested so far. How are they looking to hit the underneath route, unable to connect, and now faces the third. You see the third down conversion percentage last year, right around 32, near the bottom of the pack, 12. On third and four, they're going to run it, and it's Marcus Mason who got the start tonight, and he's out to midfield with a first down, a gain of nine. Let's take a look at our Lee Jeans impact matchup. You know, in this ball game, we've already touched on the quarterback for Washington State, Connor Halliday, but Robinson Therese at that star position, a new defensive set for Auburn this year, the 4-2-5. He's a hybrid defensive back linebacker, effectively in this ball game. He's the nickelback on every down. After the first down, back to the ground, and Mason is snuffed out. It's going to be a loss on the play as Gabe Wright, who got the start at the inside D tackle spot, takes down the ball carrier for a loss of two. And just miscommunication on the back side. Elliot Bosch, and you see there, left guard. You know, un unfortunately, untouched. You get a guy like Gabe Wright running free up into your backfield, a tackle for loss, and it knocks your offense off of schedule, now facing second and 10 plus. Jeffrey Whitaker is out, so Gabe Wright getting the start. Now Halliday on the comebacker, complete to Christoph Williams, trying to pick his way ahead and gets inside the 45-yard line of Auburn. Ryan Smith, the field safety, brings him down to the turf. Now a much more manageable si situation here, Stinch, for this air raid offense. Well, you want to just continue to eat up the yardage needed there, a big gainer to make it back to third and manageable. You know they're staying in the past sets, but thinking back to the previous third down, what stresses the defense is you're thinking pass, and then they hit you with the draw to the middle of your defensive front. Washington State able to convert the previous third down because the defense facing the passing patterns. Looking to convert on third and four, and they do complete to the 39-yard line. Ricky Galvin with the catch, a gain of five. They'll move the chains. Already, you're hearing these names. You're spreading the football around. Halliday getting it to Christoph Williams. Ricky Galvin, Isaiah Myers. It makes the defense defend all the weapons that are available to Mike Leach and Connor Halliday as the passer. Leach's idea of balance is getting four catches apiece for all of his receivers. First and ten, Halliday looks to the right. Complete again. This time it's caught by Gabe Marks coming off a solid true freshman season. Averaged over 11 yards per catch last year, and he gets 12 on this one. We're going to see a lot of man coverage in this ball game and visiting with defensive coordinator Ellis Johnson. He recognizes the importance of the tight windows. He's obviously going to mix up some of these coverages in an effort to stress Connor Halliday and his decision making. So far, Halliday's been very patient with where he's going with the ball. Penalty markers. Down on the field. A razzle dazzle look like they're from Washington State. Before the snap, false start. Offense, number 76. Five drive penalty. Still first down. And a penalty on the right tackle, Rico Forbes. His first start since 2010 when he was in junior college. So a little nervous tonight. Well, you know, it's playing on the road. It's not extremely loud right now. The crowd was into it earlier on the couple of third downs, but with the conversions, they quieted down. They maintain the down, so it's still first, but again, behind the chains. See if they're trying to try to make up some of that yardage. On first and 15, Halliday has a man caught at the 13, and inside the five is Dominique Williams. Well, Mike Leach said, I'm looking for my Michael Crabtree. Maybe it's Williams. 
Well, more and more, you see him underneath the coverage of Jonathan Mincy. And when you can see his numbers, Halliday has a great target to get the ball downfield to Dominique Williams, who kind of filled the role of Marcus Wilson, who they lost over the course of the season a year ago. Lau Fawcett, Jeremiah Lau Fawcett checks in, 11th play of the drive, first and goal. Lobbing it into the end zone, and off the hands of Williams incomplete. Well covered by Chris Davis, the cornerback, the senior leader of that Auburn secondary. They like what they see in Chris Davis again, locked up in man. This is a great ball, though. Look at the touch that Halliday places on it. Williams has a chance to haul that in, and it just goes off of his fingertips. You see the hand fighting, and it looks to me like Davis might have punched that ball away off the rebound. Great defensive coverage there by Davis. Send it up on Dominic Williams. No surprise, nine passes, two rushes. Lau Fossa in the backfield. And he gets it and goes straight ahead, pushes the pile. Touchdown Washington State on the opening series. Jeremiah Lau Fossa who turned heads in camp as a short yardage back, takes it in from four out. And this is a physical run. He's met there. Chris Frost has an opportunity to meet the runner right there at three yards to work with before he gets to the end zone. Larry Fossa just powers his way into the score. And one of the better kickers in the Pac-12, Andrew Fernie, knocks it through. It's 7-0. Washington State. A 12-play, 75-yard opening drive for the Cougars on the road. Gus Malzahn's offense gets it next. Welcome back to ESPNU College Football, presented by 5-Hour Energy. Back here at Jordan-Hare Stadium, 7-0 already. Washington State with a 12-play, 75-yard drive in Four minutes and 17 seconds. Now, we're going to see the new look Auburn Tigers on offense for the first time here in 2013 as Washington State is set to kick off. The Cougars, Matt, haven't had a winning record since 2003. The longest streak of futility in team history. They're excited to start changing that fortune. And what a start here tonight. Yeah, a, a decisive drive, maybe a definitive one. They did everything seemingly that they wanted to get done other than the penalty and the tackle for loss a very efficient opening drive by washington state trey mason from a yard deep to the 15 and on his feet to the 19 yard line and now nick marshall who had one terrific year at garden city junior college now the seventh different auburn starter in seven years that's unbelievable when you think about it. And given the success that Auburn has had, absent of a lost 2012 season, bowl achieving teams put together with new quarterbacks as the signal caller and including a national championship and an undefeated run. Ready to get his feet wet. Drop the uh, shotgun snap. Now has to improvise and he's brought down at the 15 yard line by the middle linebacker, Daryl Monroe. So an inauspicious start to Nick Marshall's career at Auburn. You see, it throws the timing off completely. You see, it looked to me like the nose tackle there. It looked to me like the nose tackle jumped the snap a little bit. I don't know if it messed up this mute's snap, but either way, the timing was off on that play from the beginning. After the loss of four, a little end around here to Corey Grant. Grant first down. The transfer from Alabama after the 2010 season is going to factor in the Auburn running game. He picks up 15. And you see here, so you pick up the yardage, and now here comes Auburn, lined up, ready to run a play. When they get positive yardage, that's when they drop the hammer and start rattling off plays quickly. Marshall again from the shotgun. They fake that same play. Now sets in the pocket and goes deep. He's got a big arm, but he overshoots his receiver by 10 yards. That is one thing that they say about Nick Marshall. He can really air it out, but he overthrew Sammy Coates by a mile. Sammy Coates is going to have to knock about five-tenths of a second off of his 40 to run underneath that one. Nick Marshall has got a hose, to say the least, 
But he's got to rein that in. It doesn't do anybody any good if your receiver can't run underneath it. You're exactly right. Same play. Washington State was there to defend it. They spread it out. Now they throw it in the flat to Ricardo Lewis, and he drops it. You know, already we've seen Corey Grant, Ricardo Lewis, two guys that wanted to get into the offense. But you do think that if they want to be run-oriented, third and ten is a difficult down. This is a situation that the coaches wanted to avoid. They wanted to put Nick Marshall in a situation where he could succeed now, an obvious pass passing situation. Penalty marker down. Marshall throws. Nobody home. Incomplete. And we'll see what the flag is about. Closest receiver was C.J. Uzama. Here's Hubert Owens. Holding. Offense number 63. Offside. Defense number 93. Those penalties offset. Replay third down. So it's a break for Auburn. Well, it's been a disjointed series so far for Auburn. You see the hold. But rolling to your left, Nick Marshall and any quarterback coach, any quarterback that's ever played the position, it's dangerous going back to the middle of the field. They got lucky there. Trey Mason in the backfield to the right of Nick Marshall. See what Gus Malzahn calls here. Mason moves to the other side. Third and ten to the outside, incomplete. Intended for big 6'4", 258, C.J. Uzama, but Nolan Washington, the boundary corner was all over him. It's fourth down. Well, when you look at it, it's just a big target, as you mentioned. He's able to come back for it. you got to come down with the football. It's contested by Washington. Uzama's got to help his quarterback. He hits him in the hands. He's right there at the sticks. Come up with that possession and be able to convert, maintain possession for your offense as it is. A poor opening series for Auburn offensively. One of the better punters in the SEC, the entire country, Stephen Clark. And he drops it at the 33 into the arms of Leon Brooks, and that's where the Cougars will have it. So a good opening series for Washington State, not so good for Auburn. It's 7-0 Cougars here on the Plains. ESPNU College Football Primetime is presented by the makers of Five Hour Energy. Take it after lunch, be clear and alert for hours. And Dick's Sporting Goods, every season starts at Dick's. On a steamy night in Auburn, Alabama, we welcome you back to the college football season alongside Matt Stinchcomb, I'm Clay Mathic. And tonight, we welcome a new member to our ESPN team. Let's go down to Don Davenport. Thank you guys. Good to be with you. Hey, Nick Marshall, that drive didn't go exactly how he wanted it to, obviously, but he came off the field patting his chest, sat down with his teammates. He took the blame for it, and he's calm. I talked to offensive coordinator Rhett Lashley before the game, and he said he's calm, he's collected. That's why he won the starting job. Rhett Lashley, one of the uh, up-and-coming young coaches in this country. He's 29 years old, the offensive coordinator for Gus Malzahn. Here's Halliday to throw on first down, and he's complete about the 38-yard line. It's a gain of four. Halliday knows that decision-making is key in this offense. He had some growing pains last year through 13 interceptions, but a great start so far tonight as these numbers indicate. I'll tell you what's amazing is that seven you see right there, that's the seven different receivers, each completion going to somebody else. Low snap. Halliday handles it fine. Wobbly pass, but it's complete for a first down. He continues to hit receivers. This time again, Gabe Marks. Give him 10 there. You know, so far in this ball game, Washington State's offensive front last year, much maligned. They couldn't run the football. They couldn't protect the passer. 57 sacks. But so far, even though Halliday had to buy a little time there, a relatively clean pocket to work with. Burn rushes three, Halliday to the outside again, and another completion. Ricky Galvin 
brings it in. Another 13-yard play, and you see the ranks from last year. They can only improve for Washington State. You know, obviously, you look at the passing numbers. NCAA rank, that's pretty sporty right there. Ninth in the country. The problem is they couldn't rush the football, and they lacked a little bit of balance. Just the threat of the run was non-existent, and the sacks allowed really undid a lot of the progress. try to run and this is where Mike Leach wants to see drastic improvement there's Craig Sanders shooting in from his defensive end spot for a loss of three well, the running game anemic last year the leading returning rusher DeAndre Caldwell 269 yards last year well, that's a couple of times now we've seen the first possession on first down Washington State trying to get the run game going both resulting in a tackle for loss another busted assignment in the run game for Washington State up front. It's going to be third down and long for the Cougars. Great pressure that time on Halliday. Ben Bradley, he's going to get a lot of time tonight on the interior of that defensive line. Ben Bradley working inside. He actually comes on a stunt. And unfortunately, you see there, Rico Forbes. Unable to make the switch, and they get a free run on the quarterback. Halliday goes down. Just got done talking about how good the protection is. There's a flag down. This is going to go against Washington State. Already two penalties against the Cougars. Attention to Brown there. Offense, number 12, the quarterback was still in the pocket, no receiver in the area. That penalty is a loss of down at the spot of the foul. Third down. You see Mike Leach. Well, this is reminiscent of last year. Now, you know he's not ready to panic, of course. But what he doesn't want to see is his quarterback trying to, or having to unload you know, last season. The quarterback injuries to Tool and to Halliday caused them to lose time. They're treated like pinatas all 2012. It makes it hard to get into a rhythm. A two for two on third down. Coming back for the ball is Gabe Marks. Up along the sideline, he's going to be well short of the first down. Runs into an official. The line judge goes down. So it'll be fourth down here for the Cougars. As this series was all set up on first down with the tackle for loss. And an excellent job by Craig Sanders, then Ben Bradley coming on the stunt, getting what is effectively a sack. You end up with a flip pass out there to Marks. He's just trying to gain a little bit of ground in the field position battle so that they can punt it away and pin Auburn deep. Auburn seeking to get a good possession and make amends for that first offensive possession. Chris Davis is back deep. First time on the punt return unit for the Tigers. This sails over his head. Can they keep it out of the end zone? They do. Well covered by Nolan Washington. It's down at the one. A 43-yard punt for Michael Bolin. Great hang time. And it allows Nolan Washington to get to the end line. He's just a backstop. Nice awareness of where the end line is. And now Auburn gets their second offensive possession. Backed up, playing in the shadow of their own goalposts. Since the national championship season in 2010, it's been a fall from grace for Auburn. 11 and 14. And the trees of Toomer's corner poisoned by Harvey Updike. The 2010 BCS championship game MVP dismissed. Michael Dyer, the biggest rival. Alabama has been rolling them. Attendance is down. That prompted a change. Gene Chiswick fired his former offensive coordinator, hired. It's Gus Malzahn's job now. And there is a new excitement here on the Plains. A well, fresh start. And at the same time, familiarity. Hard to achieve both. Gus Malzahn had a great deal of success last year at Arkansas State. All but hoping that he can rekindle that offensive magic. Nick Marshall hands off to Cameron Artis Payne. Trying to give him some breathing room. They like this guy. Over 2,000 yards rushing and 25 touchdowns in junior college last year. Well, that's a physical run. This is something that Gus Malzahn wanted to do when he came to Auburn initially. A lot of consternation back in 2009. He's a spread guy. No, he's a spread guy that wants to run the football with authority. 
and with the physicality, this is coming out offense, just trying to get room to work with, but that could be a tone setter for Auburn after somewhat of a misfire on their opening possession. Cameron Artis Payne moving in the backfield. He'll get it again on second and six. Boy, he looked like this during the spring game back in April. He had a beautiful day. He is going to get a lot of touches this year for Auburn. Another physical run. You see that? Once you pick up the first, now Auburn back over the football, shifting formations. Marshall keeps. Ooh, and he's horse collared. Now two yards shy of the first down by Dayon Buchanan. No penalty flags. Uh, he tackled him high, but he tackled him clean. But you see there, it flipped formations. Auburn already was over the football, forcing Washington State to rush to get a line defensively. Second and two, Marshall wants to pass. And he threw behind the receiver. That was Sammy Coates who he was looking for. So now third down and two. Let's take a look at our Legion's impact matchup on this side of the ball, Marshall and Monroe. We'll see it already, the meaningfulness that they have to have out of the quarterback position. Nick Marshall, pivotal as a runner, but also throwing in the passing game. And Darryl Monroe, a true linebacker, a physical presence in the middle of the Washington State figure D. Artis Payne runs into a wall short of the first down. Junior now to the nose tackle. He stepped right in last year and became a leader. Unusual for a junior college transfer. May have forced Auburn into a punting situation again. It depends on the spot here. So it's going to be fourth and short. You see now stuffed on third down, going for it on fourth. How huge Michael Boland's punt and downing it. Nolan Washington pinning Auburn back. This decision isn't at midfield. This is an aggressive call by Gus Malzahn. Trusting his defense if it doesn't work out to stop the Cougars. And now timeout called by the Auburn sideline. You see an opportunity, you get out there, you line up, see what they're going to do to you defensively. Gives the quarterback a chance to come back and counsel, conference with his quarter, his coach, and see what they can get to pick up the first. Four thirty-three to go here in the first quarter. It's fourth and one for Auburn at their own 26-yard line. We'll see if Gus Malzahn decides to kick it away here or go for it. He wants to run 75 plays at minimum. Over 80, he feels good. And so far, 10 plays, just 35 yards of total offense. Yeah, it hasn't gone well so far. You can see them trying to pace it. Not surprised here that they sent Stephen Clark, an incredibly talented punter, a Ray Guy candidate. Why risk it this early in the ball game, giving your opponent an incredibly short field 25 yards to work with if it doesn't pick up the four. Second punt already for Auburn. And Leon Brooks back to return calls for the fair catch. Great hang time again from Clark. And it'll be first down for Washington State at the 34-yard line. ESPNU features the most thorough college football show in the land in BCS Countdown. In-depth analysis, discussion on the standings, and interviews with college football coaches and players. You won't want to miss it. BCS Countdown, Monday at 6 on ESPNU. Also live on Watch ESPN. And they'll be talking about Johnny Manziel, of course, did not play the first half today against Rice, but looked good in the second half after he served his suspension. Yeah, I'm disappointed. You know, only 50% of his passes were for touchdowns. <laughs> What a controversial offseason it was for Johnny Football. Let's see if he can win the Heisman again. Caught at the 40. Still on his feet. Christoph Williams to the 45-yard line. How about the way that whole thing was handled with Manziel? And how do you expect Manziel and Texas A&M to handle it going forward? Well, there's nothing to handle. I think there's, you know, it's effectively a non-issue. The NCAA said they'll leave it open. But they ruled in this two quarters, and now it's business as usual. I think A&M just picks up right where they left off as far as Johnny Manziel is concerned. Halliday checking after the first down. Tipped in the air and intercepted. Picked up by Robinson Therese. 
down to the 17-yard line, and a flag comes in. He is the star backer, and he is a key cog in Ellis Johnson's defense. Comes up with a big play here in the first quarter. On the first pass of the game, Robinson Therese was there to break it up. Well, they talked about Justin Garrett playing that star position. Ellis Johnson likes him, but Justin Garrett was an inside linebacker, and he was playing that star position, which is somewhat of a hybrid linebacker and a big safety, a guy with cover skills. Justin Therese was a defensive back. He's perfect. No foul to on the play. No foul. Pick up the flag. He's, he's perfect skill set to employ for this ball game when you're playing for a wide. You see the communication there. And really, he's just sitting there dropping back into his zone. Holland was coming over to assist. And if it weren't for the tip off of Brett Bartoloni's hands, that's a completion. But you talk about the timing. That was not a well-placed pass by Connor Halliday. Otherwise, it's a completion. He stepped out at the 28. And now here's Trey Mason straight ahead. What a great sign for that Auburn defense. They only had two interceptions all of last year. Incidentally, one of them coming in the opener versus Clemson at the linebacker position. You know, if we're going to stretch the analogy, Therese there as what's effectively the linebacker. They're starting this season effectively on the same foot. The difference is, is with 11 games after that, they only generated one more pick already on track to be better in the interception category. Inside handoff to Mason, looking for room on the right side, and there's not much there. There's Junior Nauta again. He's credited with the tackle. No gain for Trey Mason, who rushed for over 1,000 yards last year. He is a proven SEC back. He's going to be a big part of this offense again this year. Well, this third down is one where you talk with the defensive coordinators, the challenge with the mobile quarterback, you have to defend the run and the pass with a run pass option here. Caught by Quan Bray, first down, inside the 10, out at the 9. Clay, I want to say, we've seen them move the pocket with Nick Marshall in this ball game. That's the first completion that I can think of where they move the pocket, this time rolling to his left against his throwing arm, on target, able to hit Quan Bray to pick up the first. First completion. For Nick Marshall. And now back to Mason. Did he get in? Yes. Touchdown, Auburn. Both of these offenses are concept offenses. They'll see something that they like. Mike Leach will do the same thing. So will Malzahn. They'll run the same concept over and over again until you stop it. That's the same play similarly that Auburn used to come out of their own end zone to start this drive. They're going for two. Ryan White. Got it. Two-point conversion. Auburn leads it. You can see Gus Malzahn signaling into his players. They weren't kicking a field goal. It looked like he was saying bang, 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 bang. All this is is a power play. You see there Ryan White able to get the ball over the end line. Washington State seed relatively prepared to contest that two-point conversion, unable to get it done. 8-7 Auburn late in the first quarter. Some pictures from Gus Malzahn's first game day as Auburn's head coach. It wasn't a great start here tonight, but now Auburn on the board. They've got their first lead. It's 8-7. Welcome back to College Football Primetime, presented by Five Hour Energy, part of Dick's Sporting Goods Kickoff Week. And... A replay official from the SEC has taken another look at this. Steve Landis, our official tonight, up in the booth. Well, you could see Big Chad Slade, offensive guard, pulling in front, Ryan White. And keep in mind, it's the knee or the elbow that can establish a runner down. I think he broke the plane. You can see it from this angle pretty well. 
Watch where the football is. There. I think it breaks the plane before either his knee or his elbows make contact with the ground. After review, the ruling on the field stands. That's the point of view. You know, you got to have indisputable video evidence to overturn. The ruling was it was in. We can see there in the replays. It might have been bang, bang, knees down, elbows down, balls over, but not enough to overturn it. One point scoring margin. Auburn found a way. Let's keep in mind where this drive started. They had no room to work with. They did a good job of working their way, or working their way out using the turnover by Robinson Therese, and already the turnover's hurting Washington State, allowing Auburn back into this ball game, and they've been pinned deep in their own territory the previous two possessions. Great sign from a defense which limps into the season opener. Demetrius McNeil dismissed from the team. Some key guys out like D. Ford. Jonathan Jones out with an injury. And another touchback. Cody Parkey could do that every time if he wanted to. He's got that kind of leg. You see this run it's very similar to what we saw in the previous possession with Cameron Artis Payne Prosh sealing the backside and then here Chad Slade big 62 leading around able to get Ryan White just enough room and Malzahn you talk about a little bit of release already in this game had to be a little bit frustrated can't you let your players see it but able to get a drive capitalize on the turnover generated by your defense and already able to jump back out on top after a slow start. Auburn bringing a rush. And Halliday got rid of it quickly, but incomplete intended for Brett Bartoloni. Halliday has looked good so far. 11 for 17, 116 yards. Well, we've seen Robinson Therese matched up with Brett Bartoloni, the leading receiver from a year ago in this Cougar offense. So far, he's done a good job. A tip ball that resulted in an interception and there, good coverage to prevent the completion. Halliday on the slant route, incomplete, right through the hands of Vince Maley. Leach loves big receivers. Maley is that, but it's incomplete, so it's third down. Carl Lawson in on that last rush for Auburn. He is going to be someone to keep an eye on, a true freshman out of Alpharetta, the number two overall recruit in the nation last year. Well, Johnson likes Carl Lawson. He doesn't understand what to do defensively, mentally, but he says that some of these young defenders, Lawson being one of them, are better than the starters right now. Auburn brings a four-man rush. Halliday has time to throw, juggled caught but well short of the first down Ricky Galvin made the catch at the 28 but it's fourth down for Washington State and there was Therese again in on the tackle and the pocket starting to not necessarily collapse but get pushed back into Connor Halliday's lap not as clean as it was in the opening possession where Washington State marched right down the football field Robinson Therese two nice plays in coverage you can see his skill set as a former defensive back in this ball game. That's going to come and pay dividends for this 4-2-5 defense, and that started position for Ellis Johnson through the balance of the year. Bowen had a 43-yard punt last time that pinned Auburn at the 1. This one checks up and bounces at the 32, and it'll be dead near the 35-yard line. So decent field position for Auburn, leading 8-7. A lot of changes this year surrounding Auburn football. The biggest surprise in August camp was the fact that Kyle Frazier dropped out of the quarterback race and asked to be put on the defensive side of the ball. Nick Marshall named the starter. He flips it back to Corey Grant. Grant out to the 40. Good run on first down. Grant picked up a first down earlier in the quarter. Might pick up more of that uh, Ontario McCaleb type role this year. Well, that was one of our questions we had. You know, Ontario McCaleb, they could play him out wide. He was so quick on the fly sweeps. They could bring him through the backfield. They said Corey Grant might be one of those players that they could utilize in a similar McCaleb type role with his speed. Marshall keeps. And he's going to pick up just a yard, so third down. 
And about five yards to go for a first down. They see there, Jay Cross misses on the lead block. The last time we faced similar third down than distance, they rolled Nick Marshall to his left, moved the pocket, gave him the opportunity to run or pass the football. He elected to hit Quan Bray. If you move that pocket to get him on the perimeter, at least he has that opportunity to tuck it and run if he doesn't like what he sees downfield. Dropped, and that should have been caught by Ricardo Lewis, the big-bodied wide receiver, who they hope to emerge this year, and Gus Malzahn not happy as Auburn's going to have to punt. You see him screaming, get off the field. Once again, that's two now where we've seen that effectively dropped Ricardo Lewis before it was C.J. Uzoma on the opening possession of, the, uh, of this game. These drops that would have been otherwise first down yardage. Already the third punt tonight for Stephen Clark. And he's still in the first quarter. Another boomer, Leon Brooks, another fair catch at the 12. So Marshall one for six. 15 yards passing, two drops. Not helping your quarterback in that regard. You know, you talk about as a coach, want to put him in a position to succeed, and they are, but his receivers and his teammates have to help him as well. Here's a look at our SEC greats brought to you by Regions Bank. And of course, Cam Newton is a guy that Nick Marshall has been compared to fairly and unfairly. Yeah, yeah, I would say largely unfairly. I mean, there's some parallels, of course. Started his career at the University of Georgia. It's a mobile guy, but not near the size of a Cam Newton, at least four inches small and about 40 pounds lighter. Halliday, good protection, throws it off his back foot. Intercepted again. Josh Holsey. Second time Halliday has been picked off on successive series. And that's how the first quarter comes to an end. Well, Clay, we talked about it at the top. You got to be better decision making at the quarterback position. One of the questions they had from Halliday is can he do a better job of that? That one was an inexcusable choice to throw the football against your body downfield. Only two interceptions by this defense all of last year. Already two for Auburn tonight. Hi, Matt. Scott Leffler, of course, the new offensive coordinator at Virginia Tech. He was the OC here last year for the Auburn Tigers, and things did not go well for that man and company. Yeah, they got blanked, as I recall. Yep. Frank Beamer looking to get some fresh ideas on offense. So far, not working out. This is going to be Marshall keeping. And a gain of five. Let's go down to the field, Don Dabbitt. Guys, Auburn coach Gus Malzahn not happy with what his offense is doing at this point in this game. He came over to the bench when they were sitting there. He said, guys, we got to wake up. Let's go. He really wants them to up the tempo here. See Gus there? He's just speaking the truth in love right there. Just making sure everybody understands what he's looking for. And it didn't drop passes. It was actually Artis Payne on that last carry. And he's in the backfield again. He's got a first down. Cameron Artis Payne, he was out of football for two years before going to J.C. in California. He turned 23 over the summer. Gus Malzahn likes him. And another new face here on the Plains. Again, a lot of changes with the team, especially offensive. Well, he'll be a key contributor. We've already seen him here tonight when they were in their coming out offense after getting pinned back. Deep in their own territory, he provides a physical presence. Trey Mason was a guy who had success running between the tackles, but now they have the luxury with Artis Payne of being a more physical runner to get downhill. Nick Marshall isn't Cam Newton in that he's 50 pounds shy of Cam Newton. They need a big power back in this offense. Jay Prosh, the H back, leading the way, but. There's no room to operate up the middle for Cameron Artis Payne. And Xavier Cooper, the defensive end, drops in for a loss of one. Xavier Cooper is one of these sophomore performers for Washington State. When we talked with Mike 
Presky, the defensive coordinator for Washington State, he's one of those guys that they think can really improve. This was a lot of freshmen playing for the Cougars a year ago, 17 of them. He's one of these sophomores with experience that has to step up for them defensively. Marshall flares it out, Ricardo Lewis, who had that drop earlier, makes a nice catch. Struggles ahead inside the 30-yard line. And now it's a third down. And about five to go. What are you looking for here for Auburn? Well, you know, before we saw in the previous two third downs where they moved the pocket, Nick Marshall was able to hit Quan Bray and convert. Last time, they leave him in the pocket. They had a drop pass. It looks like a new leader Number five. Five yards. Still third down. And this is what can happen in the offense. You know, when they're able to pick up yardage, now obviously it changes the decision-making completely. But when you're substituting quickly and you're at the line of scrimmage, personnel can be very confusing. The way they signal in their plays, any of these teams that run up tempo, that's part of the magic. How do you get it communicated from a personnel standpoint to make sure guys are out there? You can see the numbers, third down passing, only one of three the one time they converted. Third and six becomes third and 11. He's going to the end zone, and he overshoots his target again, and again, it's Sammy Coates. Fourth and 11. You know, that time, though, Sammy Coates, I think, runs under the pass for six, but he gets tangled up with Anthony Carpenter in the coverage. Carpenter's running with him. You see, to the right of your screen, Marshall's looking downfield. He didn't see him stumble there. Otherwise, I think Coates had plenty enough juice to run underneath that pass. That time, Nick Marshall, I don't think, overshot his receiver. We've seen that tonight, but not there. A 50-yard attempt here from Cody Parkey. He was 11 of 14 on his kicks last year with a long of 46. And he missed it by a lot. Auburn comes up empty on this series, but they lead the game 8-7. Back in Auburn, you're watching the SEC on ESPN. Started the Gus Malzahn era here in Auburn on a hot night. It's college football like you don't see anywhere else. A combination of opinion, information, entertainment. College football daily, Monday at 1 Eastern on ESPN. You also live on Watch ESPN. Well, we've got a competitive football game. Both teams have kind of struggled offensively here at times. Auburn really unable to sustain any long drives like Washington State was to open the game, but they've swapped punts. On the drag route, it's complete to Marks. Cuts back. And about a yard short of the first down, Therese in on the tackle. Now, Connor Halliday got out to a great start, as you alluded to, Matt, especially on that opening series where he went 75 yards down the field. But the last three possessions, a couple of interceptions and a three and out. You know, part of that's a function, I think, of the pressure he's felt perceived or real. You know, Auburn able to get to him a couple of times. I think it rattled him somewhat. Here's Halliday. Pressed from behind by Lawson. And he's going to get the first down. Boy, he could feel that 258-pounder breathing down his neck. But he gets the two yards necessary, and they'll move the chains. Oh, Carl Lawson, he may not understand all of his assignments in Ellis Johnson's defense, but you see him there stand up at end, and he's just going to explode upfield. Does an excellent job on Gunnar Eklund, and he falls back in to make the play, but make the quarterback feel your pressure from the edge. Halliday, jump pass on first down, complete. And running room right up the middle for Christoph Williams. That's going to be close to another first down. In fact, it is out to the 45-yard line. Well, in Lawson last year, you hear a lot about the number one recruit in the country, Robert Kendici, but right down the road at Milton High School was Lawson. And Ellis Johnson and this coaching staff they're pleased with what they have, even though D-line coach Riley Garner looks like he's got some coaching points for the young guy. Gabe Wright in the backfield, but that's going to be a flag on Auburn. Here's Jeremiah Lafu Asa, who lost the football. Auburn has it, but it sure looked like Gabe Wright was offside. Well, Gabe Wright being in the backfield is what created all this direction. Who's got? Got White? 
You want to talk about a violent proposition when the ball is loose and there's a pile like that and there's 20 bodies involved, it can get pretty ugly at the bottom. Those refs can't get in there fast enough to unpile it. Offside. Defense. Number 90. Five yards from the previous spot. Still first down. As a former offensive lineman at Georgia, you've been under a pile like this a time or two. Haven't I? Yeah, unfortunately. And you never want to be the reason that caused it. I'll be honest, I'm looking at that. It looked to me like Gabe Wright, he guessed. But I think he might have timed it just right. Otherwise, well, you see that proved to be a pretty big penalty. They pick up five yards on what could have been a big tackle for loss and ultimately maybe a turnover. It's kind of a loss of 20 for Washington State. It's first and five at the 40 of Auburn. And they may have drawn Auburn offside again, maybe a free play. And blow it dead. Offside. Defense, number 98 with contact. Five yards from the previous spot. The result of the penalty is a first down. That was Angelo Blackson, the defensive tackle, offside that time. So now first down. There's a, there's a free first down. Rodney Garner, we saw him earlier chewing out Lawson. You know, there, Angelo Blackson, back-to-back -back plays, you give the opposing team's offense a free first down and 10 free yards, effectively. You can see Connor Halliday, they've changed up the snap count to stem some of this pass rush. Finally, Auburn stays on side. It's Caldwell with the run to the 30, a pickup of five. So Ellis Johnson, the first-year defensive coordinator for Auburn, watching, comes back to the SEC after one year as a head coach at Southern Miss. Sam, he's put together some pretty good squads. South Carolina, top 10 defense, doing an excellent job. And here with an up-tempo offense on Auburn, looking to improve from what was an abysmal year on defense last season. Slant route caught Williams first down to the 21 yard line. Dominique Williams led the team with over 16 yards per catch as a freshman, gets nine. They move the sticks again. That time, Ryan Smith just allowing free access to the inside. You see Mike Leakes, not a call sheet, just a little notepad, keeping notes on what the defensive looks are, what responses he's getting to some of their passing concepts. There, they just throw to the open space and let the receiver run into the pass. I got a timeout, Washington State. So Mike Leach calling the timeout. His offense has clicked along pretty good here tonight. 12 first downs already. They've got it at the 21 of Auburn. If you... Hi, Matt. Despite that ingrown toenail, A.J. McCarron and company looking fine. Now, speaking of quarterbacks, Connor Halliday, he is 15 of 22 for 147. Most of those completions in the short passing game. Well, he was a gambler. Last year, it was bet money to win money. This season, though, and already in this ball game, a lot of success with the 15 yards and closer type of routes to underneath patterns. From the 21 of Auburn, first down and 10. Halliday, quick strike incomplete. He was looking for Gabe Marks. Halliday is lanky, 6'4", 190. He tries to put on weight at training table, can't do it. He seems to be very comfortable. Compared to last year when, when he and Jeff Toole were, ru were running this offense, it was shaky at times. Yeah, well, they're getting used to the new system, but also they were under duress. We talked about the protection issues. So far tonight, the protection has been spotty at times, but holding up better than what they were used to a season ago. It's Teandre Caldwell. He's bottled up. And he barely got back to the line of scrimmage. He'll, in fact, get one yard. With Darius Owens, the defensive end, makes the tackle. So now third down and nine. And what will Washington State draw up here? Well, you know, so many times they want to find some area of spacing to get the ball into. It's not necessarily throwing to a man, attack the grass is their mentality. But I'd be surprised with two backs in the backfield that they don't try to slip screen and use the pass rush against Auburn. 
Halliday, plenty of time. Wide open man in the flat, caught. And it's Marcus Mason with the first down, and he's out at the seven-yard line. He was left unattended, and he picks up 13. When you look back at Mike Leach's offenses, the running back is not a running back. He's a receiver. They'll scat the backs out. This time, they start with two backs in the backfield. It might as well be empty. You see both of them flood the flats, and there is no one to account for Caldwell as he gets up until towards the end zone. That is vintage stretching the zone and no one to account for the flats of the sideline. First and goal from the seven. Ninth play of the drive, Halliday caught. Touchdown! Bobby Ratliff, the junior from California, puts Washington State back in front. And Clay, let's remember how this drive got started. We looked at it, an encroachment penalty. You know, a little bit of gamesmanship. Connor Halliday, we talk about his arm, his decision making, switching up the snap count, picking up a free first down, then hitting some quick timing patterns, a nice run by Caldwell, hits his back out of the backfield, all the things that they were looking for out of their quarterback that is different from what they saw a season ago. Two nice scoring drives by the Cougars tonight. One of 75 yards, this one 67 yards on nine plays. Insurance and Pennzoil. We know it doesn't matter what you do in your car. It only matters what you put in it. On Gus Malzahn's first night as head coach, his Tigers are down now. 14 to 8 midway through the second quarter. There is Bobby Ratliff. Got that touchdown pass moments ago. The second touchdown pass for Connor Halliday tonight. 167 yards passing for Halliday already. He had 330 yards per game passing last year, which was first in the Pac-12, but a better O-line, better receivers this year, more veteran guys. His numbers could go up this year. Here's Trey Mason to the 20. Finds some room on the near side. To midfield. He could go. Touchdown, Trey Mason. had a 100-yard return for a touchdown against Mississippi State last year. And he's done it again. 100 yards for Mason, and we're tied at 14. And Auburn's going to go for two again. Ryan White converted last time. And now they bring Parkey back into PAT formation. White is holding. And it's good, and Auburn leads at 15-14. What an answer. After missing a field goal, you give up a touchdown. What's the best way to salve your wounds? You get a kickoff return from stepping out of your own end zone, 100 plus yards. Trey Mason couldn't have gone any further to get to the other end zone. Great blocking, he was able to get wide and great containment. And how quickly a momentum in the game can switch the two-point conversion, allowing Auburn to go back up on top. And you see that streak, six consecutive seasons where Auburn special teams finds a way to take a kickoff return all the way to the shed for six. Trey Mason showing that speed that the coaches coveted so much. And running 100 yards tonight in one burst is, <laughs> is a chore. I, it is 85, 86 degrees here tonight, and about 100% humidity, it feels like. Oh, you could walk straight out of the locker room and do that and go into full body cramps. It's, uh, this is like a wet sponge out here tonight. Even if you practice it, there's no way to prepare for it. I'll be surprised if we don't see some cramping out there. Trey Mason, though, 
He's pushed the fluids. He didn't cramp up at all. That was the only thing that might have stopped him that last 20 yards was leg cramps. Didn't quite happen. Ends up in the end zone. And now, once again, Auburn climbing back into this ball game. Let's see if Parkey puts it through the end zone again. He's done it twice tonight. Make it three times. You know, it's a great return. Watch the left side of your screen. You see that? See the finish? Right there. Just enough. Just enough jersey. What you don't want your return guys to do is to hold and then throw your arms up in the air like I didn't do anything. Right. That's a surefire way for the refs to be like, well, clearly you did something. In that instance, you could tell just subtle enough to get away with it. Sometimes that's what it takes on these returns. Either way, no flag, six points. Halliday with the ball now trying to answer. They run it on first down, and it's Marcus Mason, and it's a good run. He's got a first down and more. He steps out at the 41-yard line. Mason, only 12 carries last year. He is expected to be on the field a lot this season, given 16 and a first down for the Cougars. Well, Auburn, Auburn is doing a lot of end tackle stunts where the ends are stunting towards the center of their defensive line to help occupy some of those rushing lanes in the draw game. That time, Washington State's offensive front did a good job of matching up and providing an opportunity to get downfield on the ground for the Cougars, something that they've attempted but not had a ton of success at so far tonight. It was a quick hitter, and first off, Williams couldn't haul it in. Williams battled injuries last year, healthy to start 2013. And dropped there, second and ten. Walker's out in front for Christoph Williams if he makes that completion. We've seen a couple tonight where receivers have opportunities to make the reception ball hits him in the hands seems like several of them have been on some of these quicker passes how are they taking just a little bit off of that pass to allow the receiver a better catch here's halliday looking left now looking over the middle it's complete caught around midfield and it's going to be close to a first down for galvin ricky galvin the junior out of berkeley california will get the first down you know, Ricky Galvin did a good job of settling over the football. Connor Halliday had a little bit of pressure from around the edge. He was patient and able to deliver it into traffic. He settled right there between Holsey and it looked like Chris Frost. And now we got a flag. For the snap, substitution infraction on the offense. Five yards. Second down. You know, both of these teams run at a pretty good pace. We've already seen that called against Auburn, now against Mike Leach's air raid offense. You know, no huddle. You're at the line of scrimmage. You're trying to get guys in and out. It's late. The play clock. You see there, too many guys that were in the huddle. They back you up on the down and distance, and now you're dealing with the first and 15 after getting into somewhat of a rhythm. Tried to draw the defense off again on first and 15. Complete. Ratliff again. Making his way to the end zone. He stopped just short. Bobby Ratliff hauled down by Chris Davis. First down and goal at the one for Washington State. You see right here, here's Bobby Ratliff at the Y. You see Josh Holsey, he's trying to drop. He's the dime. Nobody's over top, though. Blown coverage where Whitehead just couldn't get over top. Holsey let him run right by. Through the back of the end zone for Halliday. Casanova McKenzie, good pressure on Halliday. He had to get rid of it. That was a pretty good decision. So now, second down and goal to go. First down, you're knocking on the door. There's no sense in trying to force it into traffic. You don't like what you see. The best throw you can make is to some co-ed in the third row because you don't <laughs> want to push it into the coverage and give up a turnover in the end zone. Co-eds like souvenirs. <laughs> Absolutely. And again, Halliday had those 13 picks last year. He's already thrown two tonight. The short yardage back, Laufasa spins. Did he get in? Yes, touchdown. Jeremiah Laufasa. The transfer from Central Washington. And Washington State goes back in front. 
they didn't do it all running, but they had success running the football with Mason earlier in this. And Lawton Fossa has proven to be a solid option when you get down in these short yardage, goal line scenarios. It's very congested, a lot of big bodies. We need some girth to slam up into the offensive front to get in the end zone. Andrew Fernie, the starting kicker since his freshman year, knocks it through. It's 21-15, another impressive scoring drive for the Cougars. Hi, right, Matt, looking forward to it. Yeah, Manziel, of course, suspended for that first half, and six defensive starters were suspended for Texas A&M today. 21-15, Washington State leads now as Gus Malzahn, the 47-year-old head coach of Auburn, one of four new head coaches in the SEC. Some say he's going to have the easiest transition in year one of the four because he was only gone for a year, and he recruited many of these guys to Auburn. It's a perfect scenario. You end up basically being able to promote from within a coach who just got head coaching experience at the collegiate level that he otherwise didn't have. Familiar with this roster, the facilities, the program. He recruited a lot of these guys to play in his system. Leaves for one year just long enough to run his own show and gets to return to the Plains. You can't script it any better than that. Trey Mason, a 100-yard touchdown return on the last kickoff. Takes a knee, and it's going to start at the 25. Brett Bielema, Butch Jones, Mark Stoops also enter year number one. I'll tell you what, Brett Bielema, a surprise hire in Arkansas, almost a whisper campaign that went on the entire season. Butch Jones at Tennessee, they love what he's seen, what he's done coming into this season. All the recruiting, all the aura around the program seeming to be more positive, albeit they're still working on their first game. He's done everything right other than get that first W. Mark Stoops and the Kentucky Wildcats losing to Western Kentucky right now in Nashville. Of course, Western Kentucky upset the Wildcats last year. Here's Corey Grant. He could go. Nobody's going to catch Corey Grant. A 75-yard touchdown run. Play, what were we saying about energy on offense? I mean, it's a little disappointing for the fans in here. I'm sure they made them wait one more play to get the touchdown. The touchback on the kickoff instead of a kickoff return, return for six. <laughs> one offensive snap, and Auburn is in the end zone again. And Corey Grant, Trey Mason showing that home, home run capability. Corey Grant playing in front of a home crowd. He's a kid right here from Opelika. Just outside of Auburn. Touchdown. The previous play is under further review. And they're going to take a look. Maybe they're thinking that Grant stepped out along that sideline. Again, our replay official tonight from the SEC is Steve Landis. I'll be surprised if he did. You know, it, it wasn't like he was forced very wide. Unless he was just rolling so fast. Yeah. I think that it was his inside foot about four steps ago. His inside foot somehow clipped the white. That's all you need. You don't have to step all the way out of bounds. You just have to touch the white of the paint. That's somewhat inexplicable because really it wasn't as if he was getting forced that wide. But I think he had so much momentum that Anthony Carpenter forced him just wide enough. It might be that outside foot right there. And if it's not that one, it's the next step. As he tries to gain a little bit more room, he might have stepped out of bounds twice. Look at the ref. He's just trying to keep up with him, man. It's hard to keep track of where his feet are landing. He just wants to make sure he gets to the end line <laughs> in time. You can show those replays up on the Jumbotron now in the SEC, and those fans seeing exactly what you're seeing at home. Everybody knows what happened there with the ref. The ref looked like an athlete. I think he probably wanted me to circle and point out <laughs> that he was able to keep up with Corey Grant. Did you see there, though? Well, that inside foot is definitely on the line. I'm not sure that the step right before this one where his outside foot was out of bounds. 
Either way, look at the ref swivel his hips and run. That guy's a job. It's a foot race to the end zone. He's in mid-season form. He is. On opening night. I'll tell you what, as many plays as a run now, and you talk about safety issues, these refs have to be in tremendous After condition. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. Wow. Uh -oh. The ruling stands. It wasn't confirmed. It just stands. I'm surprised at that. Now, I mean, to me, it looked like he didn't step out once, but twice. And clearly, the replay official didn't feel as if it was indisputable. I'll tell you what, the, the shots that we get, if they got those, I'm surprised at that ruling. Parkey puts Auburn back in front. 22-21. Just over six minutes to go before halftime. It's been a great back-and-forth game. Oh no, you broke your line again? So You're watching the SEC on ESPN. ESPN is the home for passionate college football fans as our experts break down the top schools in the nation in a weekly three-hour special. Don't miss any of the unfiltered conversation about the hot topics in college football. The experts Tuesday at 1 on ESPNU. Are you on the experts this week? I am not. I'm not an expert Taking a week, week off? Yeah. I'm a, I'm a novice. Well, opening weekend of college football, it's been a great offseason. The, the buildup has been great this year. What have you taken away from the game so far? Well, in this one, I mean, there, there's been a lull, of course, prior to this back and forth. Big hitting pass play from Washington State in response to a kickoff return for a touchdown, and then Auburn. One offensive play from scrimmage, and they're right back with another home run by Corey Grant. And all of a sudden, what was becoming kind of a sleepy ball game at 8-7 to seven has exploded. And we talked about Johnny Manziel earlier. He did play in the second half of that game for Texas A&M and was effective. Realistically, his chances to win the Heisman for the second year in a row. Uh, you know, what happened last year, I think, is the field kind of came back to him. Colin Klein was a guy that everybody was talking about. They drop a ball game, and all of a sudden, the luster's off his candidacy. Manti Teo, an all-defense player somehow up there. It wasn't like it was a very strong field. And then you look at Manziel's numbers, and you can make a tremendous argument for a guy who beat the number one team in the country in Alabama, the only team able to do that. Talk more big picture here in a second. First down of 10, and there is Adams. Montrevious Adams with the sack of Halliday. He was ranked the number two high school defensive tackle in the country last year by ESPN. This young man has a bright future. You see him lined up inside. We've seen stunts this whole game. Montavious Adams, he's just able to beat the cut block. John Fullington tried to go low. Montavious Adams. He's an athlete, a true freshman, able to get upfield and get Halliday on the ground. Second and 12. Incomplete. Isaiah Myers had it ripped away by Whitehead and Davis. This could have been an Auburn interception for the third time. It was an incomplete pass. You see Jermaine Whitehead. He was underneath that route. Casanova McKenzie was underneath it as well. You see Chris Davis, Connor Halliday trying to fit it into a tight window. And once again, Adams on that previous pass rush was able to get good push into Halliday's face. He's already been sacked once, might be rattled on this possession. Caught first down. They are now four for six on third down conversions as Marks makes the catch. Able to maintain his composure. They love his confidence in Connor Halliday. You see Marks at the top of your screen working against Jonathan Minzy. Just works him inside out. Minzy unable to get turned around in time, leaving the sideline open, and Halliday places the ball perfectly to pick up the first. Uh, Halliday wanting to throw again. Out to Caldwell, the running back. And he gets it to the 45-yard line. Mincy trips him up. I'll tell you what, as loud as this stadium was two plays ago, 
and we don't remember in 2012 this stadium being that loud. That was an impressive first down for the Cougars as there is a man down after that eight-yard gain, and it is mincing. A key first down for Washington State. As you feel the momentum starting to shift, big plays starting to pile up on Washington State defensively and in their special teams, albeit you know, the offense for the Cougars also able to answer with big plays of their own. And here, you see Halliday and Caldwell's all alone once again. You talk about how dangerous these running backs can be. And you can see as Mincy comes up, I wonder if it's not, it looks to me almost like a knee caught him in the head. And for all the discussion about targeting and helmet to helmet, I can remember as a player, the worst time I ever got my egg scrambled was when a guy kicked me in the head accidentally with his knee. And I think that's what we're dealing with here. Well, Jonathan Mincy was thrown out of the A-Day game back in April. Gus Malzahn was on the field when it happened. And when you were talking about targeting, this is a perfect example of that. And that's Dimitri Reese on the receiving end. I'll tell you what, sometimes I guess you forget that this is one of your own. A competitive spirit comes out. It looked to me like he led with his forearm. Either way, he was above the shoulder pads. It's not often you get thrown out of a spring game. <laughs> no, it's not. It's like getting thrown out of the Pro Bowl or something. That's, that's cannibalism. But there you see Mincy working his way out. Physical player. That's some of the edge that Ellis Johnson, I think, wants on this defense. Targeting has always been enforced in college football, but the punishment now for it is very severe. We'll talk more about that in a second. Second down and two as La Ufasa has checked in in the backfield. Auburn showing rush. Blitz. And Adams again in the backfield, and they cut off the runner. Montrevious Adams getting in there for a loss of three. He's in there with Davis. We talked about Ellis Johnson. He likes what he sees in Montrevious, Montrevious Adams. See him right there. He's hidden. Right behind Frost, just sits right underneath the block of John Fullington and Elliot Bosch. Once again, seems like there's misassigned in the run game. We keep in mind, Clay McGuire was the second-year offensive line coach. Last year was his first-year coaching. Auburn trying to get off the field on third down. And they will. It is caught by Caldwell, but short of the first down by a few yards. Unless Leach decides to go for it, three forty-three to play, and really, you look at all. It looks like he's definitely preparing to talk with his quarterback to go for it here on fourth down. Auburn has had big plays, but they had a short field on the touchdown drive that they had. They haven't staged long drives. What do you think of this call? Is this a smart move? I think what Leach is saying here is he's willing to roll the dice versus the Auburn offense. He likes his chances. Quick hitter, Halliday tipped in the air incomplete. Right through the hands of Williams. And Auburn takes over on downs. And they've got great field position, a lot of time on the clock. Once again, the ball caroming off a receiver's hands. Williams was able to show his quarterback the numbers. When he gets underneath, it looks like Davis here. Davis comes up and contests the reception. Does a good job of arriving as the ball does. Williams shaken up. He had the first down yardage, unable to grasp the ball as it arrived. We've seen some drops already in this ball game. And once again, Washington State rolls the dice. And here's Auburn with excellent field position. And Mike Leach wanting to roll the dice there, coming up perhaps, and now your defense defending half of the football field. So Nick Marshall in the Auburn offense, first and 10 from the 45 of Washington State. Corey Grant again. Nice run on first down. That's the same play that he took to the house, just to the other side of the offensive line. And you see here as he comes into the formation, nice, nice athleticism. Look at him getting over some traffic and trash. Brandon Fulce creating a pile. You see Corey Grant 
not only able to tightrope, but he's also able to hurdle. This is the third Auburn possession that has started inside Washington State territory. Trey Mason, he's got that first down. Well, it's just a simple zone concept. Nothing special there. And Trey Mason trusting the play side blocking, just busts up in the hole, finds a crease. We're just looking to pick up a first down. We've got two and a half minutes to play. More than enough time to not only milk clock, but move the sticks. Marshall has plenty of time now. The pocket collapses. Makes his way toward the sideline and up along the sideline close to a first down. So on the home run ball by Corey Grant, then we saw the opener with the same play to pull a guard around in front. That time play action off of it, nothing downfield. And you see him making plays with his legs at the quarterback They spot. mark him back. Just a five-yard pickup, now hit in the backfield is Grant. And so it'll be third down with under two minutes to go. That's a big tackle for loss by Daryl Monroe. Able to shoot the gap and back him up, as you noted, Backed him up on the spot, and now third and long. Here's Nick Marshall, empty backfield set. They got five wides, and then they're going to keep him in the pocket. And if not, don't be surprised if protection breaks down that he shoots right up the middle of the field. It is Nick Marshall, and he will not have enough for the first down as he is cut down at the 30-yard line by Cyrus Cohen. The former walk-on strong side linebacker. Now it's fourth down for Auburn with a minute and 17 seconds to go before half. So once again, trying to give Nick Marshall opportunity to succeed. They start with five wides. They motion Jay Prosh into the backfield and run another power concept with their quarterback. Washington nope. State has called a timeout here as Auburn is going to set up for a field goal attempt. Dr. Pepper quest for the coach's trophy. And Gus Malzahn, first day as head coach at Auburn. Had a great one year at Arkansas State, 9-3, and three, led the Red Wolves to their Sun Belt Conference title. And now back here, plenty of excitement surrounding this 47-year-old head coach. You know, he bounces around. Even in his years here at Auburn, he never has a familiar face in the huddle for him. It's always a new quarterback who's the hub of the offense that he wants to run. And... Somehow or other, he finds ways to help his quarterbacks be incredibly successful. You think about his first year on the Plains. Chris Todd in 2009 sets a passing record for 22 passing touchdowns, more than any other quarterback in Auburn football history. Obviously, Cam Newton obliterates those numbers. He obliterates just about everybody's numbers until Johnny Manziel came around. But Gus Malzahn, he's a quarterback's friend. He runs a lot of plays, and he puts his QBs in a position to succeed. A lot of similarities between him and Hugh Freeze, the second-year head coach at Ole Miss. Those guys were high school coaching friends long before they got to the SEC. Took a similar path to the SEC as Freeze also coached at Arkansas State. So here is Cody Parkey setting up for a 47-yarder. He missed earlier from 50. Kick is up. Looks good. Got it. 25-21. Auburn takes the lead on the 47-yard field goal by Parkey. First game of the Gus Malzahn era. I'm sure he was anxious here today, getting ready for this first game. What have you seen in this first game for Gus Malzahn, specifically on the offensive side? Well, it hasn't really clicked. I mean, uh, the one time where they're able to get a little bit of a rhythm, where they're able to pace, they, they've tried. And it seems like when they pick up some yardage on first down and they're looking to drop the hammer and start running a bunch of plays in quick succession, then they'll get an incomplete pass or a negative yardage play or a zero yardage play and unable to really kind of get into the flow that that offense is looking to achieve. That said, the home run threat has proven to be more than lethal in this ball game. And you can see the Corey Grant able to get it all the way down, taking advantage of good field position there, unable to capitalize on a short field after a fourth down try by Washington State. They've got a missed field goal there. They pick up the three. 
but otherwise, you see Auburn working with good field position, and when they're able to, to make the turnovers hurt Washington State. It's hard enough to turn any program around, let alone one that plays in the SEC West. It'll be interesting to see what Auburn ends up with with a win total this year. As Parkey puts it to the end zone again, that's his fifth touchback here tonight. Wouldn't it be a great year in Gus Malzahn's first season if this team gets to a bowl game, wins the bowl game, even if they end up with seven wins, that would still be a pretty successful season. That's a pretty successful season. I think the way they define great years at Auburn and at Alabama is beating the other team. That's when it comes down. It's almost a one-game season. Now, nobody's saying, well, pay no attention to the other 11 ball games, but absolutely, bowl eligibility is within their grasp. Low snap, Halliday comes up firing. Catching it and dropping down to the turf is River Craycraft, one of the cover, uh, top newcomers for the Cougars. That's an eight-yard pickup. So clock running here, 56 seconds to go before halftime. 263 yards passing for Halliday. Another completion, caught at the 35. It's Gabe Marks. We'll see where the spot is. It doesn't look like he's got the first down. Robinson Therese makes the tackle. Clock moving, 34 seconds to go before the half. Third and short. Robin was confused on that last offensive snap. Busted coverage. Lucky that Gabe Marks was dancing and didn't pick up the first. Halliday had a man wide open, but he overshot his intended target, Isaiah Myers. So now fourth down. Almost looked like the ball was tipped from up here. No real reason for Halliday to have that ball float on him. Otherwise, he has Myers. Myers had had room to run after the catch. And they're going to punt. You can see the frustration on Connor Halliday as well. He knew that he had an open receiver that's running off of green-white stripes. Not a lot in between Myers in the end zone if he's able to run underneath that pass. Chris Davis, newcomer to the punt return unit. We'll see if... Well, calls for the fair catch at the 32. Bowling another good punter. We've got some great kickers in this game. And high hang time, Davis... Calls for the fair catch at the 32. Here's our stat track tonight. You can see the passing yards for Washington State, the rushing yards for Auburn. Two different offenses. Here's your number if you're following Auburn from a year ago. They've already matched their interception total from an entire season. Now what's questionable is look at these first downs by Auburn and visiting with Ellis Johnson. They'll take the quick home run, the one play drive, but they really haven't been able to click off a, a successful series so far this game. See if Auburn takes a shot or two at 14 seconds. Marshall steps up, spins down after being tackled. And that's probably going to be the last play of the half. And it was a good one. Very entertaining. The last time these two teams met was 2006 here at Jordan-Hare Stadium, and Auburn ran Washington State out of the building. It was 40-14, to 14, but this one, back and forth. And it's a four-point lead for the Tigers under the first-year head coach at the half. Let's go down to Don Davenport. Coach Gus Melzahn, your defense has forced two turnovers. What have you liked out of that group this half? Yeah, I tell you what, I think we're fortunate to be up right now. You know, we had some opportunities to score a few more points, and we missed a few. But, uh, hey, we're, we got the lead. We're going to make some adjustments and come out and see what happens. You talk about adjustments. What kind of adjustments on offense are you going to make? Well, we got to get some drives together. I mean, we got to get some first downs and uh, try, to, try to get in the end zone. All right. Thanks, Coach. 25-21 Auburn. This is Dick Sporting Goods Kickoff Week. Boy, we missed this. So good to have it back. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. From the Plains, Auburn, Alabama. 
alongside former Georgia All-American Matt Stinchcomb. I'm Clay Mathic. It's 25-21 at the half on a very hot night here in Auburn. Again, the temperature is not the problem, it's the humidity. There are stats from the first half brought to you by John Deere. Nothing runs like a deer. You would know you got a couple of tractors at the Ponderosa. Look at this. We talked about the turnovers, but something that Gus Malzahn talked about going into half is this right here, the first downs. And keep in mind the yardage generated by Auburn, 75 yards of this total offense came on one play by Corey Grant. First play from scrimmage, and that's after Trey Mason took one to the house on a kickoff return. Otherwise, this offense hasn't done a whole lot with great field position. Well, that's right. I mean, a new staff, new coaching staff, a new quarterback. And just because Gus Malzahn is back here at Auburn doesn't mean everything goes back to 2010 standards. It's, it's a good point. It's a fair point. And, you know, so much was talked about Nick Marshall and his mobility and how the obvious comparisons coming out of Juco to Cam Newton. This is different. He's a different kid. It's a different year. It's a different team that they're playing in the opener. Auburn had Clemson. Clemson took him to the wire in 2010. Here tonight, you've got this air raid offense and a Washington State Cougar team that is hanging around. Let's we'll see if they stay away from Trey Mason, number 21 in dark blue. He had a 100-yard kickoff return in the first half. Michael Bowling will kick it to him, but about five yards deep, and Mason will take a knee. Let's go down to Don Davenport. Guys, Mike Leach, a man of few words. I just talked to him and asked him what he told his team at the half. He simply said, keep playing. Also asked him what he thought about Connor Halliday's performance. He's done well in those three scoring drives. He said, yeah, he's looked good. He just doesn't need to throw interceptions. Same problem that Halliday had last year, Matt. He forced it too many times, and that led to the interception. Yeah, I mean, it, it sounds simple, but maybe that's just because it is. We talk about at Washington State, they don't even have much of a playbook. It's just well, keep it simple out there and understand what a defense is going to do with what you're trying to accomplish offensively. No matter what system you're running, turnovers are never the desired result, and that's hurt Washington State in the first half. Nick Marshall, the junior college transfer, hands off to Mason. And when you're talking Auburn, discipline is also key in Malzahn's offense, especially at quarterback. How would you grade Malzahn and Marshall and what you've seen from that combo? Yeah, it's been rocky. It's been a rocky start. You see the overthrows, a couple of wild balls from Nick Marshall. But otherwise, you've seen him capable of doing that right there as well, being able to throw on the run. You saw him convert a third down, doing the same. And this is a kid that, let's remember, started his collegiate career as primarily a defensive back at the University of Georgia still able to work into the system but also the position of quarterback after one year at the position at the juco ranks that was just his third completion got it to quan bray third down and one they're gonna run it cameron artis Payne. i don't think he got it he was stopped short of the first down by the buck defensive end destiny via fourth down Penetration and it kills any run effort. You see Vial, so he just slides underneath the block and he's tackling ankles. Artis Payne, he's just trying to get back to the line of scrimmage and he's already got defenders swiping at his ankles. This is not what they were looking for. The defense got winded for Auburn in the first half. They weren't unable to save sustain drives. And here the opening possession of the second half, and they come out and then they're right back on the sideline playing the football away. Fourth punt of the night for Stephen Clark, as you mentioned before, Matt, in the running for the Ray Guy Award each of the last two seasons. And you can see why. He's got a strong leg. Bounces inside the 15. They're going to mark it at the 13-yard line. That is a punt of 53 yards for Stephen Clark. He's a weapon. There's no two ways about it. You look at it, if you're able to flip field position, it's not ideal to have. Uh, punting situations, but you look at these drive charts, and obviously there was a rash there. You'll see, you know, a couple of INTs here and here. This is what Mike Leach is talking about. Auburn made him pay on one of those, a missed field goal on the second one. A couple of punts. They had some big plays as well, though, that were able to help them narrow the margin on the scoreboard after Auburn got a couple of big plays in the special teams and in the run game. 
First play of the second half for the Cougars. Coming back to the ball is Gabe Marks. The sophomore from Los Angeles hauls it in for a gain of eight. Now, on the opening drive of this game, Connor Halliday led the Cougars on a 12-play, 75-yard scoring drive. You know, if they march down the field here, obviously you never want to see points, but also keeping in mind, there was about a seven-minute differential in time of possession in that first half. This defense for Auburn was on the football field a long time. A new 4-2-5 defense out there for Auburn. Mason, he's tracked down at the 20. That's going to be a loss on the play. There is Craig Sanders, who made his first career start tonight. We talked about D. Ford being out with the knee injury. I think so far Sanders has played pretty well. Sanders is the veteran of that defensive front. You'll see him here at the bottom of your screen. Watch him take on the block and able to just blow right up field. Rico Forbes gets knocked into his own backfield. He ends up being a tackle for a loss. Sanders, a former special team star now. Factoring on the defensive unit. This crowd trying to get behind this Auburn defense. They want to get off the field on third down. Halliday, another first down. They had a slew of them in the first half. That is the 18th first down for Washington State tonight. Dominique Williams makes the catch. Once again, not only you maintain possession, giving yourself another opportunity. Halliday throwing the ball on time. That time Auburn brought double barrels, two A-gap blitzers. The safety came up, Holsey. But there, Halliday able to stand and deliver. And once again, you keep that defense out on the football field. Pressure coming from the edge. Halliday got away from the pressure that was coming in and threw it incomplete, so second down. The time, Ellis Johnson brings Josh Holsey. He's over there covered in the slot. He's able to come off the edge and disrupt, get Connor Halliday to move off of his spot. It's not a forte of his. We've already seen him having to throw on the run in the first half resulted in an interception. If they can get him uncomfortable in the pocket, that's the ideal scenario for this Auburn defense that has to be tiring already early in the second half. Lobbing it up along the sideline, and Bobby Ratliff never saw it. Lands incomplete, so third down and long, as Ryan Smith was running stride for stride with Ratliff. You know, so much in this offense is the quarterback and the receiver reading the defense and the coverage and how the, the defensive back is playing them the same way. You know, if he's tight to you, it's a back shoulder throw. If you're able to get separation on a fade, you just continue with the route. And there, Ratliff unable to cipher what it is Connor Halliday was trying to get done. Cougars five for nine on third down tonight. Halliday on third and ten. Rolling to his right. Again being chased by Adams. Throws over the middle. Nearly intercepted again. Jonathan Mincy is going to be thinking about that tonight when he lays his head on his pillow. That should have been a pick. I'll, I'll be surprised if Mike Leach doesn't meet Connor Halliday at the numbers and tell him don't leave the pocket anymore because we saw an interception led to Auburn's first touchdown. He's rolling right and then he's throwing back to the middle of the field. That's where all the defenders are. You hear it all the time. Quarterbacks, when you're off, the, off your spot, don't roll out and throw back towards the middle of the field under the rest. That's where the defenders are. That's where the danger is. Almost snapped over the head of Michael Bowling. Chris Davis is going to bring it back to the 40. And out of bounds at about the 46 after the three and out by Washington State. Good field position for Auburn. That offensive unit trying to show a spark here. They lead by four. You're watching ESPNU College Football Primetime, presented by 5-Hour Energy, as Washington State takes on Auburn. Due to time constraints, we move ahead in the action. ESPNU College Football Primetime is brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. And Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. 
new Auburn head coach moments ago trying to get Marshall's attention to get that timeout. Effort and attitude is what Gus Malzahn has been preaching since he took over here at Auburn. We're seeing some attitude from the new head coach tonight. Well, you know, he seems so mild-mannered. You saw the Hulk on one of those boards up there. He's like David Banner most of the time, but don't make him angry. You see him blow a gasket trying to get his team's attention. Cameron Artis Payne checks in a running back. He's going to lead here for Marshall. Marshall finds some room to the corner, gets in, but a couple of flags down on the play. And this is going to go against Auburn. Holding. Offense. Number 44. Ten yards from the previous spot. Still first down. Cameron Artis Payne, the running back, the lead blocker with the hole. You see him coming up here exactly right. Leading up. Uh, you know, he's got some jersey in his hand. I don't know if the defender even knew that Marshall had the ball. Still running upfield. Regardless, you end up, you grab a little jersey, and ends up being a hole. Cameron Artis Payne grew up with 10 brothers. So uh, he knows how to do some of the dirty stuff that uh, Gus Malzahn is going to be asked to do because he had to fight and claw just to get breakfast every morning with all those brothers. Marshall spins inside the 15 down to the 13. Cyrus Cohen credited with the tackle, so it'll be second down and goal to go. We'll see here, another power run. Nick Marshall, too much east and west. Uh, you think back to some of the power inside zone runs. You get downhill right away. Once again, you look at that holding penalty, backs up the Auburn offense. Now you see why Gus Malzahn was so upset. Felt like he had a good set after the big play to Coates. They huddled up this time. This is Quan Bray. Gets to the nine and no more. So now third down and goal to go. 7.24 to go here in the third quarter. You know, the big pass play, play to Sammy Coates was a third down. They had maximum protection, slid the offensive line, made sure that Nick Marshall had room to throw, wouldn't have hands in his face to disrupt him, and he threw a beautiful ball. The challenge is here, down here close, Everything's faster because it's a condensed field. Be surprised if Auburn runs it again here. They pass Marshall to the end zone, incomplete. Intended for C.J. Uzama, the tight end. Remember, there's no Philip Luxenkirk in this year in these uh, red zone situations. No Emory Blake to go to. Gus Malzahn's going to have to figure out who that guy is in 2013. And that guy's going to have to emerge. And eventually, in speaking with the coaches yesterday, we recognize that this is likely a very abbreviated passing plan. I doubt very much that they have most of their passing offense in at this point. From 26, Parking. He hit from 47 earlier. And he's got it. So Auburn tacks on three more. Maybe a little disappointing for the Tigers. Nick Marshall wanted a touchdown. They settled for three. Washington State takes on Auburn. Due to time constraints, we move ahead in the action. So now fourth down. Well, that time, they're easy and better position for the football than Craycraft. Well, on the previous play, Craycraft turns around, looks for the ball, slowed down enough for Therese to seemingly interfere with him. No call. And there, Therese was underneath the route, forcing a field goal attempt. We'll watch the Cougars seemingly off of two runs at the quarterback position by Halliday. Opportune to pick up first downs, but unable to get the passing game going enough to maintain the possession and keep the drive going. Andrew Fernie from 43. We've got a four-point game. Fernie, very good leg. Starting since his freshman year, and the senior knocks it through the uprights to make it 28-24. It is a new day here at Auburn. That is the theme of the 2013 season for Gus Malzahn's Tigers after the 3-9 and nine season last year. The worst season for Auburn football in 60 years. 0-8 in the SEC. But there is an energy on this campus that 
we haven't seen in some time. And Gus Malzahn, in large part, responsible for that. This is a fan base that's pretty doggone passionate. When you've got 80 plus thousand people at your spring game, coming off a three and nine season, it takes somebody special to energize a fan base like that. They've got a slogan here that we've seen, in Gus we trust. As you can see, it's been somewhat of a rocky night. Several times tonight where the head coach is not pleased with how his offense has been running. It's not been, been very smooth, but regardless, big plays, some opportunistic plays. If that's what it takes to win ball games, I don't think anybody's looking for style points. It doesn't matter. It's all about scoring and getting the W. Gus, a self-made man, too. 14 years as a high school coach in Arkansas, where he developed this offense. First got noticed with it. This into the end zone. Trey Mason's going to bring it up. A 100-yard return already tonight, this time dumped at the 21. Fresh off his PGA Championship, Auburn alum Jason Duffner spoke to the Tigers, a guest of Gus Malzahn, at a morning practice back in August. When I walked on in Auburn in 95, um, and, you know, through a lot of hard work, determination, um, listening to people, coaches, staff around me, I got to where I was one of the best in the world. And, you know, that's what it takes, whether you're a football player or a golfer. Hard work, determination, belief in each other, belief in your coaches, belief in yourself. Now, you know, you guys inspire me to be great, and I hope I inspire you guys to be great. Thank you. Gus Malzahn bringing in Jason Duffner, a big Auburn Tigers fan. Trey Mason on the carry. Is that run by Trey Mason, a gain of four. And Gus Malzahn watched Duffner win the Wanamaker Trophy, and he says, you know what, I think I can use this to my advantage. I thought we were listening to Ray Lewis right there. <laughs> well, it's, Second down it's passionate. I'll tell you what, Jason Duffner, a heck of a golfer, and as much energy as they have in practice, maybe they needed a guy to come in and give them a, a soothing yet motivational speech. Didn't know that about him. A former walk-on to the golf team. That's pretty impressive. Second down and six for Auburn, leading by four now here late in the third quarter. Marshall to a wide-open receiver, caught at the 30-yard line, and out to the 37. Catch there by Jalen Denson. Denson, one catch in 23 career games, but had a big spring and gets his first catch of 2013. He was a name that was mentioned in our meetings as well, a guy that they hope emerges at the receiver spot. Again, another opportunity for Auburn to push the ball downfield. First and 10 from the 37, it's Grant again. Finds some room to midfield. And brought down by his helmet by Deion Buchanan. Another high tackle. Well, Deion Buchanan, when you look at him, he's a headhunter in that secondary. We've seen him. You know, this one right here is a clean tackle. We saw it earlier in the ball game. He's the one that lit up Corey Grant. Ended up getting a personal foul afterwards. That's a big physical safety, but regardless, a big productive run for the Auburn offense in the first down. Now Marshall on first down over the top. Man open. Just off the fingertips of Ricardo Lewis. Lewis at 6-2. Has long arms, but couldn't get under this to bring it in. This time, Lewis, you see him at the top of your screen. He's running a post. You'll see him break it towards the center of the field. And then he has to adjust back out. If Nick Marshall leads him towards the center of those two hash marks, he runs right under the football. As it was, Lewis had to adjust back out to try to get to the football, and it goes right off of his fingertips. Marshall now 6 for 14, 74 yards passing. He'll dump it off short here to Quan Bray. This guy's got speed to burn. Lowers his shoulder, gets the first down. And he laid a hit on Dayon Buchanan. Buchanan's been throwing his body around all night, and this time he was on the receiving end. Pretty athletic play just to get that pass off. Nick Marshall having to dump it over outstretched arms. And now you can see this offense starting to click a little bit. And it might be owing to those deep shots just to loosen up the defense enough so that they can't sink in on the run game. With a broken play. Incomplete. The offensive line never moved other than to Smukes. 
Explain know, this to me. I think maybe they thought that they drew him off sides. Sometimes when you get a free play, the quarterback will go ahead. The quarterback and receivers will say, forget it. Let's take a shot. There were no flags thrown. The defensive line didn't do anything either, incidentally. You don't move, we don't move. Jonathan Wallace, the backup quarterback, is in on a trick play, and he throws it incomplete. Intended for Denson. Jonathan Wallace, who started the final four games last year with modest success, checks in for this trick play, but it doesn't bear any fruit for Auburn. Third down. Denson had a chance. See him up here, and all they're going to do, see, it's the direct, the snap timing was a little off, low snap, they fake it. They actually do hand it off to Mason, who flips it to Wallace. That's one of those gadget plays that defensive coordinator Mike Bresky talked about when the perimeter players are five and six yards backed off the line of scrimmage in this Auburn offense. That's a trick play. Tip. Hit at the 40 is Sammy Coates. Great coverage by the Cougars. It's a loss of two on the play. Tana Pritchard, the weak side linebacker, made the stop, and it's going to bring up fourth down. And this is going to be a punting situation for Auburn as they're well out of field goal range for Parkey. Now you can see it, you know, two shot plays on this series. You know, one downfield, Ricardo Lewis unable to make the adjustment to Nick Marshall's throw that was outside of the intended direction of the route, and then the gadget play that could have worked but didn't. Wallace kind of falling backwards, too much air under the ball. And then we can serve it a month third down to punt away. Stephen Clark trying to pin Washington State deep. Not a particularly good kick for a very good punter, Stephen Clark. But it takes a good Auburn roll to the 10. How about the English on that for Clark? That's a 33-yard punt. Now it's college football like you don't see anywhere else. A combination of opinion, information, and entertain the college football daily Monday at 1 Eastern on ESPN. You also live on Watch ESPN. Of course, this is the last year of the BCS. Next year, a four-team playoff. And gonna miss it, or are you looking forward to 2014? I'm looking forward to 2014. If, if for nothing else, we're getting more football that leads itself into a championship. The idea that you get two more teams involved. They can participate in championship football. That's that's a win for just about everybody. We're starting field position for the Cougars tonight from the 10. Craycraft is going to pick up a yard after the catch. Robinson Therese throws him down. That star backer position in this 4-2-5 defense for Ellis Johnson. Again, you said it in the first half how key it is. And I'll tell you what, therese has been on top of his game for most of the night. And he's been all over the place. You know, truth be told, you know, it's not the, the typical deployment of this 4-2-5 because of the number of four receiver sets. You know, Ellis Johnson made note of that. They'll have more defensive backs in the football field than they typically do. Halliday. Under through the receiver, was it picked off? Yes, Jonathan Mincing. Third interception thrown by Halliday tonight. Well, that time he's trying to go back to Dom Williams, who was a big playmaker for Washington State a year ago. And that ball was behind Williams just enough for, for Mincy to make a play on this ball. You see Dom Williams having to slow down. Uh, you know, to me, unless Mincy had his hand and forearm wedged between the ball and the grass, I'll be surprised if it didn't touch the ground at some point before he completed that interception. Now, now they're calling it incomplete. Yeah. They're calling it incomplete. No review on the play. First down, Ricky Galvin. You know, sometimes that's the worst thing that can happen, Clay. You think you got a turnover. Seems like the ruling on the field is going to support that. Ends up that it's an incomplete pass. It's like this quick change mentality on your defense, and they get caught up short. Halliday able to find Galvin for the first down yardage on the heels of that would-be interception. So that's two interceptions that Mincy should have had tonight. He dropped one, and then that one just ruled incomplete. 
Halliday over 300 yards passing tonight. Now Caldwell on the run, and it's a good one. Out to midfield, DeAndre Caldwell, the first-year starter at running back, brought down by Jermaine Whitehead. And it's a run of 25 yards, and that's how the third quarter comes to an end. What a game. Auburn with a four-point lead on Gus Malzahn's debut as head coach. We go to the fourth quarter on the Plains. Yes, sir. All right, Matt, thank you very much. Meanwhile, Auburn's running back, Corey Grant, has been a nice surprise here for the Tigers. Seven carries, 120 yards, and a touchdown. Yeah, he's shown up big. We've seen a little bit of Trey Mason. This Auburn offense living off a big play so far in this ball game. But Washington State has it now at their own 48. They pass. A collision at the 33-yard line between Ricky Galvin and Jonathan Mincy. It lands incomplete second and 10. Jonathan Mincy is not going to get any interceptions this whole season. I mean, this poor kid all night long. He should have three picks tonight already. This time, he's waiting on the ball. And you see Galvin rudely runs into him and interrupts what should have been an interception. He is squatting. Halliday threw it right to him. You see Galvin just running his route, but he might make a play on the ball. Mincy unable to complete the interception. Ellis Johnson raves about Jonathan Mincy and his work ethic. Over the middle. Incomplete. Craycraft couldn't bring it in. So now third down and long. There's Davis. The senior from Birmingham on the coverage. That was the 51st pass of the night in this air raid offense. You see Connor Halliday on third down. That's not a bad percentage, of course. Auburn able to substitute. This guy right here, Montavious Adams, a freshman. He's been a nightmare so far tonight in pass protection. He does a good job of splitting the two protectors. This time they peel him out. Nowhere to go with it. Halliday throws it away, fourth down. Auburn's running a line stunt. Watch Adams. He and Sanders are going to cross. And what Adams is going to do is when he sees the back scat out, meaning he heads out to the flat, watch him. He spreads out. He sees that back working out into the flats. Ellis Johnson talked about this. Because the play, the ball comes out so quickly, and because there is a weakness in coverage out in those flats, that he would peel the defensive end. Montavious Adams was stunning to that defensive end position. High kick for Bowen. And Davis, fair catch at the 15. Montrevious Adams, 6'4", 305. True freshman out of Vienna, Georgia. The future is bright for that D-line at Auburn. You're watching ESPNU College Football Primetime, presented by Five Hour Energy, as Washington State takes on Auburn. Due to time constraints, we move ahead in the action. ESPNU College Football Primetime is presented by the makers of Five Hour Energy. Take it after lunch. Be clear and alert for hours. That's Tumor's Corner. Absent those live oaks, they were finally removed. They were poisoned a couple of years ago. They still roll Tumor's Corner. They don't roll trees now. They just roll the Highline wires. I, that was the original tradition. Ricardo Lewis. Penalty flag. Lewis down at about the 35-yard line. Brown made the hit. And he may have been held beforehand. Holding offense number 35. That penalty is declined. Second down. Holding on Jay Prosh. It's a loss of four. Here's an artist's rendering of what uh, Tumor's Corner is going to look like in the future. You see, those oaks are going to get replaced. And then there's an alley of oaks behind it. It's, it's, it's really tragic what ended up happening. That was an unfortunate tradition. 
that had to be altered, but it'll return soon enough. Marshall on second and 15 has to change direction. Sidesteps a tackle at the 40. Not bad. Daryl Paulo runs him out, but it's a seven yard pickup on what could have been a loss of seven at least. You see Nick Marshall, they're rolling him out. Brandon falls deep. But because of the pressure, he has to change direction and reverse field. And you see there, that's Daquan Brown that he's shaken. Otherwise, it would have been a tackle for loss. He had to regain some of the yardage. Still facing a third and long. Just under 10 minutes to go. Marshall on third down, complete to Lewis. But he stops short of the first down. So Daryl Monroe makes the tackle, and now we'll see what Auburn decides to do here on fourth down. They're going to kick a field goal. A field goal makes it a touchdown game. A touchdown and a point after. You mess around, you go for it. You allow Washington State with a score to go ahead by three. As it is right now, you even it back up, force them to score a touchdown to even. This will be the fourth attempt for Parkey tonight. He's missed from 50 and has made from 47 and 26. This one from 42. From the near hash. Bingo. 31-24. Auburn. Not a bad drive, you know. Cameron Artis Payne on the on the bounce, bounce run was able to pick up the 19-yarder. But again, Auburn offense able to put points on the board, but they get stymied close to the end zone. Back at Jordan Harris Stadium in Auburn. The SEC on ESPN. This crowd of over 80,000 watching this one here tonight. As we remind you, ESPNU, the home of the experts every Tuesday, 1 Eastern. Home for passionate college football fans as our experts break down the week, look ahead to the next week. 1 o'clock on ESPNU every Tuesday. That Auburn drive, 10 plays, 56 yards in 350. But again, they settle for a field goal, the third of the night for Cody Parker. But again, close to four minutes time of possession. The first half, they were keeping it for two minutes, two minutes, 20 seconds. The defense getting right back on the football field. And at least they allowed the defensive teammates to get the, some recuperation. Caldwell to the 30-yard line. Washington State will come back out on offense. Led by Connor Halliday. They're only down a touchdown with a lot of time yet. 9.02 to go. On Halliday, when he led their field goal scoring drive, made some plays with his legs in the passing game. It hasn't been clicking so far this second half. You look at it, though, somewhat improvement. You see the completion percentage up. Passing yards already very prolific, 305. They've hit some big ones. He's been picked off twice tonight. Could have been picked off a few more times. Caldwell again. Short gain, second down. Connor Halliday again. This is his job now. It's a situation where he's the number one guy. Doesn't have to switch off with Jeff Tool. Tool on to the NFL. The undrafted free agent who signed with the Bills will start the opener against the Patriots because of injuries in Buffalo. Halliday steps out of the pocket, throws on the run. And it's Marks, Gabe Marks with the first down reception out at the 45-yard line. You see Jeff Toole, his counterpart a year ago for Connor Halliday, undrafted, pretty good numbers when he was at Washington State. And he's starting the season opener for the Buffalo Bills. Doug Marone in his first year having left Syracuse as their head coach, tapping the former Cougar as his starter. Auburn rushing four. It was nearly incomplete, but Teandre Caldwell made a nice effort to get the grab. It's a short game of three. And we go to Twitter, and you can see that Jeff Tool is keeping an eye on this one tonight. Yeah, you see him supporting his alma mater. I bet he liked that catch by Teandre Caldwell. That was a pretty nifty one-handed grab. That's bailing out your quarterback. Right, he was in the protect, too. He just kind of leaked 
out into the uh, flats there, trying to give Halliday somewhere to go with the football. Halliday now 320 passing, a touchdown and two picks. Second and seven, quick fire, complete first down. Williams to the 40-yard line. Christoph Williams, a gain of 12. Whitehead, the field safety, making the tackle for Auburn as Washington State is moving the football with 7.15 to go. Nice catch by Christoph Williams, a big body, 6'2", 215, and you can see him there. You know, this offense, if you're allowed your receivers to make the possession, get the reception, and then run after the catch, he's able to pick up another four yards after contact. This time, Halliday hands off to Lau Fosser. And that's one thing about Washington State's game tonight that's been fairly impressive. Their running game, that's 84 yards now on the ground. Remember, this is a team that averaged just 29 yards per game on the ground last year. Which is uh, abysmally, that's historically low. You'd have to go back to 2007 to find anything close to that. And incidentally, that was Texas Tech under Mike Leach. But that's low even for this offensive standards. Wally well, Fosso, the short yardage back, this time brought down by young Montrevious Adams. From just a yard, so third down and one. Once again, Montrevious Adams able to get to La Ufasa before he can get ahead of steam. We saw this earlier tonight on a third down where Adams able to get penetration. He's already down on the ground, but he's still able to get his arms up and disrupt the run. And you'll see here, keep an eye on the back out of the backfield. They're going to run four verticals. They can and hit Caldwell as he leaks out into the flats if there's nothing downfield. They call it third and two. Incomplete. Fourth down. Christoph Williams, I think he was out of bounds anyway. Then Halliday took a shot. We'll see if they bring out the field goal unit or they go for it here. This is part of the offense. You know, talk about you have to feel the coverage, but once again, big number one, Montrevious Adams. You see the collapse. Look at that power. That's just running right through John Fullington with a bull rush collapsing the pocket quickly and Halliday having to throw with a big paw in his face. They're going to go for it. Caught. First down. Gabe Marks to the 25-yard line. Marks, the sophomore, grew up a UCLA fan, but his granddad said, go out and see the world. So he went to Pullman, Washington, and now he's playing for the Cougars. <laughs> That's one way of doing it. I'll tell you what, it's the shallow cross pattern that works so well in the offense, and you see there Halliday able to stick with him and lead the receiver into the throw. Pumping Halliday. He's going to throw it away. They are now 8 for 15 on third down tonight. It's not a bad number when you look at it. In fact, that's awesome when you think about what you need to do to convert third downs. Auburn, they were pretty poor on third down last season. And then here tonight, to be above 50%. And continually moving the sticks. It looked like there that he was trying to get to River Craycraft. Didn't like what he saw and went to the stands. They run it again. Caldwell. Good one. Going to mark him out at the eight yard line. First down goal to go for Washington State after the 17 yard run by Marcus Mason. First down, they had trips to the top of the screen. They just did an excellent job. Gunnar Eklund sealing the defensive end inside. See there to me, it looked like Nosa Igwe just got sucked inside, trying to get pressure upfield, and Caldwell able to leap to the perimeter. Halliday, one touchdown pass already tonight, going to the end zone, intercepted! Robinson Therese, the star backer. Connor Halliday has been picked off three times now tonight. Well, these are the decisions. You get down, you're in scoring position. First down, you see it's an out and it's up. 
And Robinson Therese is just sitting. He's waiting on it, reading the quarterback's eyes. Watch him looking in the backfield. He just feels the receiver, knows the ball's coming out there to him. Knows he's got help over the top by Jonathan Mincy. The route was going right into coverage. It was as if Halliday had already predetermined where he was going to go with the football. We've seen this a couple of times tonight. He threw it right to Holsey in the first half as well. Three picks already for this defense. Corey Grant, big run on first down. Out to the 38-yard line. It's a run of 17. Again, just two interceptions for this defense a year ago. The Tigers have three tonight. Yeah, Robinson Therese involved in two of them. Yeah, this is that position. Justin Garrett tonight because of the passing aspect of Washington State's offense. Therese and his defensive back skills. He spent a lot of time out there on the field. He's done an excellent job in coverage. He's contested passes. He's gotten the ball in his hands. A couple interceptions now, and the defense generating turnovers, something they didn't do a year ago. Mason cuts it back up. Ball comes out. And Washington State says they have it. And they do at midfield. So just like that, the Tigers, who could have put this game away, give it back to Washington State. Dayon Buchanan comes up with the fumble recovery. First Auburn turnover tonight. Dayon Buchanan. You talk about <laughs> that man plays safety with authority. We've seen him come up a couple of times tonight with some rib rocking shots. It wasn't Buchanan. It looked to me, it looked like the men tailored Taliulu, Tally, I think, there. 30, there was one that popped it out. The cannon around the football was the one that came up with it and breathes new life into this Washington State offense. Back in the hands of Connor Halliday, trying to make amends after the interception. Marcus Mason with the run. It's a gain of five. It's interesting that uh, they go back to the ground after Halliday probably shaking a little bit, throwing his third pick. Yeah, and they had success running the football in the previous possession as well. Caldwell able to break it back to the weak side, bounce a run and pick up yardage on the ground. Just demonstrating some patience, keeping the defense honest. Washington State needs a touchdown. Three and a half to go. Halliday looks to the outside behind his receiver, Gabe Marks, incomplete. Third down and five. That's just a bad ball. It's a bad ball from Connor Halliday. We talk about maybe he's rattled. He's got to burn that interception and not allow it to hurt him for more than just the one play. That ball's behind Gabe Marks. There was room to run. This is four down situation, I think. Mike Leach has probably already got it in his head. But he just has to get it closer to the sticks if he's willing to go for it on fourth down. He's 7 of 15 tonight. They've been great on third down. Halliday pressured by Adams. Incomplete. There is Montrevious Adams in the first game of his rookie year having a big impact. Once again, has to throw off his back foot. The stunts hurt him. For the go-to typically, when you see this, where they run shallow cross to see if they can't peel someone off. If Auburn ends up in man coverage, you'll see crossing patterns just underneath the linebackers. They've had success there tonight. It's a one-back set. Also, as always, keep an eye on the back out of the backfield. To run, Caldwell, first down and more to the 32-yard line. DeAndre Caldwell rips off a 12-yard run. Twice now tonight, where Auburn commits all their defenders to the line of scrimmage. Washington's able to cover up everybody. You'll see there, nobody's playing at the second level. Elliot Bosch does a great job on Chris Frost, who had already committed to the line of scrimmage. The draw play worked perfectly. Now back to the air. He tried to force it in there again into double coverage. 
Washington State wanted a flag, but Gabe Marks was well covered by Jonathan Mincy. That was just a good defensive play, second down. Jonathan Mincy's been around the football seemingly all night. When it comes his way, he's had excellent coverage. Connor Halliday felt like he had a shot at it. It was a contested throw, though. This young secondary was a little bit of a concern, especially in the safety position. I don't know Kyle Frazier had to move there, but they recruited themselves well tonight. I don't know where he was going with that. The closest receiver was Isaiah Myers. It's third down. It was Isaiah Myers. You see Halliday saying, look, Chris Frost, number 17 at linebackers, mugging my receiver. He comes across the ball. Isaiah Myers ended up getting thrown back behind the original line of scrimmage. The third down trips to the top of your screen. We saw earlier when he tried to hit that out and up. Keep an eye on Teandre Caldwell, though, and know that once again, Auburn committing defenders to the line of scrimmage. Complete, well short of the first down. It's going to be fourth down as the helmet comes off of Isaiah Myers. He's going to have to leave the field for a play. You see that that was a play where they're just looking to try to get it manageable for a fourth down try. This is going to be fourth down and five to go. Washington State two for three tonight on fourth down. Caldwell in the backfield with Halliday. Keep an eye on this guy right here. They've had a difficulty keeping him out of the backfield. Play clock down to two. They get it off. Halliday throws incomplete. Auburn will take over. Trying to get to Dom Williams, it looked like. Miscommunication. Dom Williams broke off his route. Connor Halliday sailed it right over his head. Montrevious Adams, once again, able to get some pressure. Auburn with a touchdown lead. They get off the field on that fourth down play, and Gus Malzahn maybe has his first win in sight. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Over 85,000 in attendance tonight here at Jordan Harris Stadium. ESPNU features the most thorough college football show in the land in BCS Countdown. Analysis, discussion. Talk about the upcoming games and interviews with college football coaches and players. BCS Countdown, Monday at 6 on the U. Also live on Watch ESPN. Maybe this, this crowd is... Just over two minutes away from celebrating Gus Malzahn's first win as Auburn head coach, Washington State. Some great opportunities here in the fourth quarter, but they couldn't capitalize. No, they couldn't, although you know what? On the previous offensive possession for Auburn, they thought they were going to go in their four-minute drill and just kill the game. And the turnover gave Washington State another opportunity, but that's stuff on fourth down. And then oh, close to a first down run here. Corey Grant had a nice run on the previous possession. You see now already Washington State seeking to try to preserve whatever clock that they can. They've got one timeout remaining. Auburn has two as the clock goes under two minutes. And this offense, if Washington State can get it back, is designed for situations just like this. Passing, moving the ball quickly, getting up to the line quickly, so it's not like Halliday won't have a great opportunity if they can get the ball back. Yeah, they, they don't just stand on the gas the whole time, but they rarely huddle. You know, it's almost business as usual for them, so absolutely, if they get an opportunity. But here tonight, I don't know how we could overlook the performance of Robinson Therese. Look at those numbers. Two picks all by himself, nice and even for last year's production. He's our Wrangler five-star player of the game, Robinson Therese. Now, what does that mean for the other star backers? Justin Garrett now uh, going to be in a different role, or, or what's going to happen there at that position? Well, let's keep in mind, you see there, ball off of Berloni's hands, and then right there on the out and up. Did a good job keeping his eye on the ball. But as far as Justin Garrett's concerned, keep in mind, Auburn's got to play LSU, Georgia, a couple other big 
physical football teams. You don't want a 205 pound star backer out there. Justin Garrett, he's got range as well. I'm thinking that's where we'll see more of him at 6'1", 220. More of a linebacker type. Therese, as a former DB, who's kind of placed in that star position, fits the offense that Auburn was going to face defensively today. And he played well, did he not? Oh. All around the football, quite a bit, seven tackles. Not just the two interceptions, several passes defended. He had a whale of a ball game. Nick Marshall taking that play clock down inside of five. They give it to Trey Mason. They smartly keep it on the ground. He's out to midfield. Again, Washington State with just one timeout remaining. And they use it here. With a minute 20 to go. You know, we talked about the importance of this game for Auburn. They host Arkansas State next week. Coincidentally, where Gus Malzahn coached last year. But then they uh, have Mississippi State the following week. And when you play in the SEC West, the schedule is always tough. If they have, if they drop the game against Washington State, it puts a bad taste in their mouth. And it, the schedule doesn't get that much easier. No, I mean, when you look at it, given the season they had a year ago, and every year's a new year, but you got Alabama, you got Georgia, you got... Uh, Texas A&M, you, know, you got to play uh, LSU early in the season. You, know, you start to look at some of these teams and you're wondering, coming into the season, we got four tough, tough wins on our schedule already. You're playing an eight-game season. You drop a game to Washington State. That means you've got to squeeze out seven wins. You got to get six to get bowl eligible in a crowded conference. You, know, you lose, you lessen that margin for error. But it also, again, after the season they had a year ago, I think more than anything else, it's a tone. It's the tone that you've set for the season. And in your season open, if you struggle, if you come out with a loss, the pall that that can cast on the balance of your schedule, that can affect other ball games. Marshall gives it to Mason again, straight ahead. Third down at about two. As the clock now moves in Washington State, Helpless to stop it. They're out of timeouts. They're going to run it until they can stop it, too. They're just popping Alex Kozan around, leading up. Mason doing a good job of following his blocker, just slamming it up in there, milking clock. And Mike Leach, some positives tonight. That running game looked much better. But again, Connor Halliday turning the ball over too much as Marshall will now go into victory formation with this offense and takes it in. You know, tonight, Armour's got a lot to work on offensively, but what it comes down to to this, you got to do what it takes to get the win. They took some punches, the opening series. Washington State goes right.